Hello. This is the last lecture in the series, and it's going to be about symmetry projections. Why do we need symmetry projection? Let me remind you that uh, when we solve the eigenvalue problem for the Hamiltonian, uh, electronic Hamiltonian in our case, there are also operators that commute with Hamiltonian, uh, say number of electrons, spin, also pain, point group uh, if uh, symmetry uh, of the molecule allows. So then those operators are very useful in finding the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian because we know that the uh, eigenstates of the Hamiltonian also eigenstates of this uh, symmetry operators. Now, in order to guide the variational uh, say process to uh, the right eigenstates, what we can do, we can uh, optimize not the energy uh, functional, but uh, functional with the constraints uh, that cares about satisfying the symmetry constraints. Here, for example, the variance of the symmetry operator uh, needs to be minimized uh, as well as energy. But alternative to that, uh, one can formulate the projection operator P and formulate a different functional that achieves essentially the same goal. Uh, P operator uh, cuts out all the unnecessary uh, symmetry spurious uh, components of the wave function. And uh, essentially by this purification, it imposes the right symmetry. Now, because that uh, purification removes some norm of the wave function, we need to renormalize. Uh, and that's why we have denominator here in this uh, functional. Now, why the second way is uh, worth talking about? Because it has some advantages compared to constraints. Projection imposes symmetries, even if wave function doesn't have ability to impose or to have those symmetries uh, built in. And uh, that's great because if you operate in with the unitary transformation that uh, doesn't have capability to introduce the right symmetry, then this functional, for example, will uh, be arbitrarily large, uh, depending on lambda, because simply uh, your function will not be able to satisfy the uh, variance constraint. Also, uh, the fact that the, essentially our projection uh, will take care of the symmetry, relieve degrees of freedom that we have in a wave function, just to lower the energy and not to worry about satisfying the symmetry constraints, right? because uh, the P will take care of that. So those are the two advantages, and uh, that's why it's interesting to consider symmetry projection. Now, the main material of this uh, presentation will be based on the paper we published a year ago, right here. There are also some interesting uh, advanced materials that uh, you can read to understand the subject better, and some new developments, actually. Uh, came out recently on some of the projections. Now, how do we construct uh, symmetry projectors? And uh, it turns out that usually it's not a single symmetry operator we have, but uh, a set of uh, operators or a bunch of them essentially. And it's easy to construct symmetry operator uh, symmetry projections uh, if the symmetry operators form a group. And by group, I mean simply that the set of operators, if you multiply them, you're going to obtain another operator from the set. Now, a simple example would be a point group of a water molecule in this case. If you have, uh, like in this group, operations like rotation around the uh, axis of the second degree or uh, reflection in the planes, then no matter what combination of those operations you do, you can still. Uh, essentially represent that combination as some operation from a set. Now, I'm not going to go too much into the theory of the groups, uh, but, uh, and if you haven't studied that subject, I highly recommend to look into that. But uh, what uh, is a useful element uh, from those theories is that no matter whether we deal with discrete or continuous group, uh, we can obtain standard textbook uh, expression for a projection operator, and it involves uh, essentially irreducible representation you want to project to, the dimension of that, uh, number of group elements, 
and then you go and uh, add the operations in the group uh, with coefficients uh, based on the character of that irreducible representation of that element and that's pretty much uh, all you need some linear combination of operations uh, each of the operations uh, can be essentially presented by the unitary operation and therefore the projector is the linear combination of unitaries but of course not every unitary uh, linear combination uh, linear combination of unitaries is a unitary operator therefore one uh, usually have this projector which is not a, a unitary uh, operator now for the continuous groups i'm not going to go to the general expression but things are very similar to the discrete case uh, with few differences as you could imagine if the group is continuous that somewhere the sum will be substituted by integral uh, here i will show on the example of the number of electrons operator it's not unitary and in order to make a group out of it you need to exponentiate multiply by some phase phi which goes between zero and pi it's continuous and you can easily check that uh, different phi's you can multiply these exponents and get the like essentially other phi's and uh, this is this is indeed continuous group and projection to an as particular number of electrons can be organized this way where this is essentially a group elements summed because there is an integral and uh, uh, this part is essentially part that uh, uh, is analogous to the character okay so how do we use this formalism for quantum computing and what are the things to be worried about uh, now if we look at the uh, energy functional uh, after introducing the projections we can uh, simplify it further because uh, those are projections and uh, they are Hermitian operators and since the all well, then p dagger is the same as p and the p square is p so that's that's how we simplify the denominator also because they're symmetric projectors uh, the p any p or p dagger will commute with Hamiltonian and we get uh, the simplification in numerator now on top of these considerations uh, there are a few things to worry about uh, projectors are not unitary and that's why we cannot implement them simply as a circuit elements uh, directly but because the linear combination of unitaries uh, one can think of uh, doing them as uh, like at least components of projectors as unitary now also another problem uh, projectors may not be uh, simple functions of uh, symmetry operator that's uh, usually happens in continuous group symmetries because uh, as you saw for the number we need an exponent and exponent is uh, a not simple polynomial function number of terms can also grow both uh, in denominator but also more so in denominator because uh, we have a multiplication of all the terms in Hamiltonian with the terms that projector produces so those are the uh, main points of concern and uh, to see how this all can uh, essentially give us some troubles uh, let's consider a simple example with a number operator uh, which in the fermionic representation is uh, can be written just simply a dagger a or summation over all orbitals in qubit representation we can uh, transform this operator using jordan wigner transformation it's just a sum over uh, all z terms for all qubits plus some constant and then once we have a number operator we can plug it in into this expression for a projector here instead of this n with hat we can put this n expression and if you have uh, a number in mind say for hydrogen molecule this n can be two because neutral hydrogen is as two electrons then uh, the problem that you can easily run into and see it easily here is that uh, even though all these terms commute but uh, there are n of them and uh, when you exponentiate n terms that just breaks down to n exponents and each exponent if you use uh, property of the exponential function uh, written down as a cosine and sine uh, you have two terms real and imaginary and overall there will be two to the n terms 
plus somehow you need to discretize the integral. So it's gonna be pretty complicated. And one of the kind of, well, if you try to trace what is the root of all these issues physically, it, you, can, you can see that uh, in reality, we just, uh, this expression uh, give us uh, very high accuracy on uh, what components of the wave functions uh, one can separate or project out with uh, this expression. Uh, just to give you an example, if you are interested in two electrons, and here is two, and you are given the function that has uh, components that are uh, with two electrons, two and a half electrons, or 2.3 electrons, so this uh, operator will cut out all the uh, components which are not exactly two. But in physical functions, we don't have, uh, say, fractional number of electrons. We have all integer numbers, and that's why this accuracy is somewhat excessive. Now, that suggests how to uh, introduce some approximations and simplify this expression for the sake of uh, well, reducing the number of terms that you obtain in this uh, projection. So one approximation is uh, to reduce the number of uh, well, say grid points for approximating this integral. And uh, the way we can go is that uh, well, this integral essentially is for the continuous groups. And it, it, it is there because we want to separate uh, some kind of, uh, like essentially all the continuous values of phi. Uh, but in reality, we have only integer number of uh, number of electrons in the system. So we don't need the integral. We can substitute Lie group by a finite subgroup of Lie group. And that simplifies the expression. It removes the integral and gets back to the discrete sum. The simplest example would be if we, um, instead of the full circle, phi goes from 0 to 2 pi, we just consider two points, phi equals 0 and uh, phi equals pi. That turns out to be enough to separate all even uh, from all odd forms uh, in the number of electrons. Now, the second simplification one can make is by reducing the range of symmetry operator eigenvalues. Uh, in this case, n can be anything from zero to infinite value, uh, but we don't need infinite number of electrons in finite uh, system. So by reducing the number of um, electrons uh, we consider uh, to the finite value, then the exponent turns out to be uh, just a, a simple operator that uh, essentially turns out into polynomial. And uh, the whole expression turns into the polynomial expression, like this product of over all the eigenvalues that we uh, care about. And this turns out to be uh, like in the old days, uh, Lovdin formula for uh, spin projection. The same can be done for the number or other continuous symmetries if you know what the range of the eigenvalues you are interested in. With that, let's uh, see how this works, how this improves uh, our variational quantum eigensolver solution. All the simulations here are on the classical computer. That's why there are no uh, error bars. First system is hydrogen molecule, STO3G basis, and just a mean field. So the exact answer is in black. It's potential energy surface. And uh, if we restrict with constraints, C stands for constraints, uh, Q, QMF is qubit mean field for spin equals singlet and the number of electrons two. Then the blue curve is uh, too high from the, the black one. That's because the mean field with constraints is uh, relatively far from the exact solution. Now, if we don't put constraints, this is QMF, then we have uh, symmetry breaking, which we talked about before. And if we have projection on the singlet state with two electrons, we get exactly the of the right curve. Um, here is an example where projection, uh, even at the mean field level, uh, makes a uh, result exact, essentially. But this is a very simple system. The projection doesn't increase the number of terms in the Hamiltonian because uh, here we have only two qubits and the number of terms in the Hamiltonian already large, so that projection uh, doesn't really uh, create any new terms uh, because 
it's just a two qubit system and uh, polynomial growth in the Hamiltonian, same as exponential growth after adding projector. Now, more interesting system would be lithium H, and uh, we do the STO3G basis again, mean field. Uh, similar picture, the black is the exact curve, and the red one is, uh, say, the constrained qubit, uh, qubit mean field with the singlet as a constraint. So we are not allowing the symmetry uh, breaking for the spin, at least. If we constrain only a number of electrons, then there is a symmetry breaking in spin, the blue curve. And then if we don't put any constraints, there is also symmetry breaking. Uh, both in number and spin probably. And if we do projections, then the curves become closer to the exact one, but still there's some way to go. On the number of terms, uh, we have 100 in the Hamiltonian and adding the projection um, gives us up to uh, 36 more terms, which is not a big uh, number. So it's a, it's a reasonable increase. Uh, but what we would like to is to increase the accuracy still, and it seems like projection doesn't uh, go all the way uh, to the exact answer. But it turns out that if we add just one extra entangler on top of the mean field, we switch to the qubit coupled cluster theory, then we can get to the chemical accuracy. So the way it works is, again, black is exact, the blue is a mean field without any constraints, and if we add one entangler on top of the qubit mean field. So the blue curve becomes a red curve, still far from the black one. But if on top of one entangler, we add also projection to the singlet spin, uh, we get into chemical accuracy. And the impressive part of this result is that in order to get to the exact answer with the, without any projection, uh, with chemical accuracy, you need seven entanglers within the qubit coupled cluster theory. And here with projection, we just do it in one entangler. To summarize, projections, they have uh, pros and cons. Advantages of projection formalism is that uh, they impose symmetries of the wave, uh, for the wave functions, even if wave functions uh, don't have uh, capabilities to introduce those symmetries by themselves. And uh, also that relieves uh, variational degrees of in the wave function ansatz to lower energy. That's, that's what we saw for the case of lithium H where one entangler with projection uh, is equivalent pretty much to seven entanglers uh, without any projection. Now one needs to be uh, careful though with projection because projections are unitary and they can be quite expensive functions, especially in the continuous uh, symmetries. Here we show how to simplify these functions uh, by somewhat uh, approximating the projection a process because simply we know from the physics uh, that uh, we don't need a high accuracy that the continuous uh, symmetries projection formulas provide. And that also allows us to reduce the number of terms in the, say, uh, Hamiltonian multiply by projection formula, uh, projector or projector itself. And uh, that's what uh, needs to be usually done if you're working with continuous symmetries. With that, I would like to thank you and uh, leave you with some questions for further consideration and uh, discussion.